Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can highlight or format the next month in a series of dates. Yeah, I got this question from a viewer, and it's kind of an interesting idea. He didn't want to highlight or format the current row, the current month. He wanted to highlight the next month. And yeah, we can do that too. We'll use a conditional formatting with a formula. Now to test this out, I've got a uh, an amortization table for a mortgage up here, and um, and everything works. There's a lot of rows. There's 180 rows of data, and I'm recording this on April 9th, so we're in the April month. And so in theory, when I'm when I'm correct, we'll have May highlighting, but we'll be able to change that first date around so that we can see that the conditional formatting works for that particular date. The thing we need to keep in mind, we're gonna be looking at the month of the date and the year of the date because we don't just want the next month, but we wanna make sure it's the, it's the next month within, um, uh, within the current year. So we'll have to make sure we factor that into our formatting. So let's go ahead and give it a try here. Not 100% necessary. We could just highlight our first row of data, but I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all of our data that we want to mess around with. And I'm just highlighting the, date, the data within this amortization table. Any extraneous information off to the side doesn't need to be highlighted. In fact, I don't even need to highlight this first row. Now off my home ribbon, I'm going to go to uh, conditional formatting and I'm going to create a new rule. Let's put this right up here so we can zoom in on it. And I want to use a formula to determine which cells I want to format. Now typing in these formulas can always be a little bit tricky and what we're going to do is we're going to end up writing it once, we're going to test it out, and there might be a little modification we have to make as soon as we apply it. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to start off with an equal sign. Now I'm interested specifically in A, uh, A2. That's the top left corner of the date that I'm interested in. So it is essential that we start off in that top left corner and I'm going to choose A2. Now technically I want this to be an absolute column in a relative row so I'm using dollar sign A and then just number two and I was pressing the F4 key by the way on my keyboard to toggle through those various relative absolute states. Now it's not just A2 that we're interested in we want to know the month of A2 so in front of that I'm going to put month parentheses a2. Now when you're dealing with the month function you're going to get numbers 1 through 12. So I want to know, and I did misspelled the word month so let's go ahead and correct that. So I want to know if the month of A2 is equal to the month of today. Now notice I'm writing the today function, the word today, with an empty set of parentheses within the parentheses of the month function. But it's not just the month of today. I want to know the month of today plus one. So if the current month is four, I want to know if the month of A2 is equal to five, which is going to be the next month. Okay, I think I'm going to go just with this for a second. We're not done, certainly. We still have to take care of the year. But let's see what we can do with this stage of the game. I'm looking at the month of A2, seeing if it's equivalent or equal to the month of today plus one. And I'm going to go ahead and choose formatting, and I'll choose a fill, and I'll just do a uh, light shade of yellow. That should be sufficient. Click OK. Click OK. Now we actually are getting a, a pretty positive reaction here. So I can see that all the rows for May are being highlighted because it's currently April, and so it's highlighting those next month, those next months. All right, that's pretty cool. Now that that's taken care of, I really don't have to have anything highlighted. I can always go back into conditional formatting, manage rules, and then I always like to look at this worksheet, not just current selection. I'm going to go to this worksheet so I can get a feel for everything that's on there. We only had one to look at. Now what I thought I might have to fix is the application of this range, but everything looks pretty good. It's applying to A2 to F181, which is all the way down at the bottom of my amortization table. However, now I would like to look at the years. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to edit this rule and around this entire function, notice I'm just to the right of the equal sign, I'm going to put an AND, opening parentheses, and then right after that plus one, I'll put my closing parentheses. So I'm going to use an AND function. AND function needs two things, or multiple things, 
to be true. We're already pretty happy with that month. So right after the number one, I'm going to type a comma. And it's a little bit confusing here because we don't get all the normal syntax highlighting that we, if we were typing a function in a cell. But basically, I'm doing the second argument of my AND function. The month portion looks good, so my year portion is going to look pretty similar. If the month of the row is equal to my current month plus one, that's cool. Now I want to find out if the year of dollar sign a 2 relative to, I want to know if the year is equal to the year of today. Now, there's a lot of little parentheses going on here, so let's make sure we're looking at this. The year of A2 needs to be equal to the year of today. Today is simply the word today with an empty set of parentheses. And then I've got another closing parentheses, which is part of the um, the main year function, and then that last closing parentheses is the closing parentheses for the AND function. So if the month is equal to the next month and the year is equal to the current year, I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and everything looks fine there. I'll click OK again, and now we can see only the next month is highlighted. OK, so I think that's working pretty good, and we'll do one quick little test just to see how this works. Let's pretend that it wasn't April 1st that I was doing this, but let's assume it was January 1st of 2021. That means obviously May is down there. May is still going to be highlighted because I am basing this off of um, the current month plus one. So even though my date of January 1st is well in the past, my current month is still April of 21, which means my highlighted row is still going to be May of 21. But now that we have that year in there, everything is looking pretty good. Now you might be wondering, what's going to happen in December? That's an interesting little question because in December, my formula is not going to work quite right, right? Because if it is December, I want to know what the next month is. And the next month is not going to be my current month plus one. It's going to be one. So since our video is getting a little bit long here, I think I'll pick up that challenge in a separate video. Thanks for hanging out with me.